to post on YouTube because I want to make money. I'm going to post on TikTok because I want to make money. That's not what God wants us to do. Too much. This is too much for me. Hey guys, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This topic that we're talking about today is very fresh, very convicting to me. Keeping this channel really real and raw, I want to try my best to portray this message in the way that God spoke with me. And so I want to encourage you to pray. Um, actually, why not we pray together? Our Father in heaven, we pray to thee at this time, filled with gratitude and with conviction in our hearts for the control that we feel over our lives. Lord, we live in turbulent times, and often the future is quite unknown and unsure. We know that we have a peace that surpasses all understanding, knowing that your Son, Jesus Christ, is coming again soon. However, we feel a sense of unsurety. We feel a sense of fear surrounding our lives and what our future looks like. We worry for our well-being and for the well-being of our family. Lord, we ask thee that you break down those barriers within our hearts and within our minds and open our hearts to the message that you wish to portray to us today. And Lord, we ask that you guide our actions and you bless us with the spirit of peace and understanding for what you have planned for our lives and to break down the control that we feel that we need to have. But we know that all that we need is you. And no matter what our circumstances look like, whether good or whether bad, you are ultimately in control and care for each and every one of us. Lord, we ask to feel your love as we go throughout our days and throughout this video. And we say these things in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whoa. You know what's so crazy? Filming this video the first time, I was like not feeling it. Put the camera, it's, something's not right. And so I just paused the video and I was like, God, point me in the right direction. And wow. What a great way to start this video. As you know, and if you're clicking on this video, we're talking about letting go of your grip on God's will for your life and trying to navigate that and learning how to surrender. What that looks like as you're working through this. Some of the feelings that you're feeling is valid. We do live in turbulent times and we do live in a world where so many things are happening. And we feel the need to protect ourselves financially, physically, spiritually. And through that, we start to pit our will against God's. This is what he warned us about in the latter days is people are gonna start to puff their chests up and to really just focus on themselves. In this world, it's all about hustle culture, selfishness. If you really look at it, how can I make more money? How can I have a side of income? Oh, there's all these self-development and like self-isolation things on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. So I need to self-isolate. I need to get better. I need to self, I, 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 I. What do I get from it? What kind of wealth do I get to build? What do I get to gain? That's the world that we live in. There's an extent to the control that we have and the way that we steward ourselves, there's a limit. That's what the devil wants you to think. He wants you to think that all of that is okay. To fear man and to fear the uncertainty of this economy in the future more than you fear God. So C.S. Lewis, he's a, I think a well-known like Christian author. Um, he explained this perfectly and he said, the moment you have a self at all, there's a possibility of putting yourself first, wanting to be the center, wanting to be God. That was the sin of Satan, remember? And that was the sin he taught the human race. Some people think the fall of man had to do with sex, but that was a mistake. But Satan put into the heads of our remote ancestors with the idea that they could be like gods. They could set up their own as if they had created themselves, be their own masters, invent some sort of happiness for themselves outside of God, apart. From God. This is a long terrible story of man trying to find something other than God which will make him happy. Do you not see this? It worked with Adam and Eve, it's working now. All this self-development, self-productivity, chasing the next dollar, man trying to find something other than God which will make them happy, which will make them feel protected, which will make them feel like they're in control. So this is where you check your heart posture. Am I seeking my own way after my own image of what my own idea of success looks like? Am I chasing after the image of my own God? Are you chasing after the likeness of this world? A deep dive into my personal life. Me and my partner, we are planning for marriage. To be able to prepare, we need to prepare ourselves, you know, especially financially, not only spiritually, all adults here by remaining abstinent, but also financially. I live live in the most ex expensive state in the US. I think it's the most expensive. It could be California. I live in Hawaii and rent isn't cheap. And so I would very much focus on, okay, how can I make more money? How can I have a good amount saved up for that time being? How can I have a good amount of my checking? So I'm prepared, emergency fund, like all the things I'm like, okay, I need to be so good financially. I'm gonna start budgeting and like all these things. The more and more that I became focused on that number, the more and more I started 
chasing after the money. The more and more my heart started to become greedy. Money and wanting wealth, that's a bad thing. It's the love of money. I'm so blessed to be able to make money that serves others that is so rewarding. I'm a health and fitness coach. I see people's lives change not just in their the physical health but also their mental health i brought other clients back to god we get to talk about god together like that is the most beautiful job that somebody can ask for i can post on social media share my message this way that is free to others and also the possibility of making money in i don't see the money from this yet let me just say that like i don't see it however that's what I strived for the most was, okay, I'm going to post on YouTube because I want to make money. I'm going to post on TikTok because I want to make money. But that's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to use our spiritual gifts, our talents, our passions, our work as a way to honor and serve him. And when we're able to do those things, we surrender that control because we know that God is going to take care of us. He's always going to take care of us at the end of the day when we honor and serve him. And what I mean by serving him, when you are in the service of your fellow beings, you're only in the service of your God. You're always going to win. Like there's no such thing as losing. And I feel like that takes the pressure in itself. You're not losing if you're not where you want to be. You're not losing if things are taking longer than you thought. You're not losing if you're working hard and you're not seeing the results yet. You're not losing for letting go more than you are gaining at the moment. All of it is momentum. The Lord commanded us to do this and this is aligned with his commandments. Why am I worried? Why don't I worry about how I'm going to serve my clients? How am I going to serve you guys on youtube that's the things that matter to god he's looking how much people can you make an impact on to share more about me and to convert people to me not only in this life but when he comes back i want him to come back and tell me my my good and faithful servant now that i'm back to rule this earth i want you to help me because i know you you followed me despite the odds despite the uncertainties you followed me whoa whoa too much this is too much for me okay next elijah prayed that it wouldn't rain and it didn't for three and a half years then he prayed it would and it did but something else happened <laughs> crops grew if the crops grew when the rain came this suggests there are already seeds in the ground this suggests that farmers were still sowing seeds in the dry dirt even when there was no rain they kept planting i don't know about you but sometimes prayer and action can sometimes feel like this for me like i'm sowing seeds in the desert but what i've learned is that often when it feels like nothing is happening physically there's plenty that's happening spiritually and if god is not changing your situation he's trying to change you from the inside out even if i can't see it or even if i can't feel it yet personally I want to have my seeds already in the ground when the rain comes. I can trust that he'll deliver in any and all circumstances that we're in. You need to surrender by understanding what pride is. Pride and honesty cannot coexist. Pride distorts the truth about things as they are and they have been and as they will be. Pride is a very misunderstood sin. Most of us think of pride as self-centeredness, conceit, boastfulness, arrogance. All of these elements are of the sin. The central feature of pride is enmity. Enmity towards God and enmity towards our fellow men. Enmity means hatred towards, hostility to, or the state of opposition. It is the power by which Satan wishes to reign over us. Pride is essentially competitive in nature. We pit our will against God's when we direct our pride towards God. It is in the spirit of my will and not thine be done. Our will in competition to God's will allows desires, appetites, and passions to go unbridled. I'm just going to leave it there. Pray for guidance on how to let go of that control. I'm going to throw another personal example out there. My Nana, she was clearing her storage unit for her. And because I have the privilege to work from home, I was tasked to sell her items, but to take commission from them. And all I could think was, oh, I want to make sure that I sell these, this, this, and this, and like have a good price. And I want to make sure I sell, like, so greedy, honestly. Like, I, oh, I so ugly to even think about it I was just praying because i've been feeling that greediness you know in my heart it doesn't feel good and so my motives just, just wasn't in the right place and so i prayed i was like god please help me you know what god does right he doesn't take it away all the time but he gives you opportunities to practice patience when struggling with impatience selflessness when you're greedy and when you're selfish i ended up coming to the conclusion 
that I wasn't going to profit anything off of my Nana stuff. Even though I have to post every individual item, hold garage sales, do the research on certain items, ship them out when they sell. Like, although I have to do these things, it's okay. You know, it's going to require work, but this is a selfless service that I need to do, you know, to overcome this greed in my heart. But even though I'm not rewarded this way, I'm rewarded this way in my spirit, not only with God, but also with my Nana, who needs it more than I do. The number one thing that we can do to let go of control is to serve. Forget yourself and go to work. Like, forget what you want. Forget what you think you'll gain. Forget it. Forget about you. Just go and work. Like, me and my Nana, oh, I'm gonna sell her items because I get commission. I'm gonna take, like, 30-40% because it's a lot. No. Put those personal priorities aside. Put that convenience aside what's in it for me mentality that greedy mentality and instead serve just serve with no expectation of receiving serve without the expectation of fame fortune or any other form of immediate gratification whether it's posting online with the intent to share a good message whether it's bringing the spirit of excellence into your work whether it's buying an extra bento for the homeless man outside like whatever it looks like forget yourself and go to work serve without the expectation to get anything back jesus is the prime example of what unselfish service looks like when we're able to practice unselfish service we're able to overcome the sense of control over our lives by helping the needy and helping the poor and although it's not always going to be temporal he's always going to bless us spiritually nothing is ever being wasted or overlooked every single thing that you do every single action that you take every ounce of faith that you put into it every unselfless service that you give to others every prayer that you make to overcome your sense of control all of this is being tallied by the angels of heaven God is counting everything. You could be rewarded in a matter of days, months, weeks, years. You could even only be rewarded in the next life, but everything will always pay off. Our treasures are currently being stored up in heaven. Don't worry. Don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be all right. Okay, literally. Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 to 34 therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewith shall we be clothed for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you remember that it's gonna pay off it always has and it always will Do not forget who is in control let go of your grip. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. Whether this gets one view, I hope that this gets pointed in the right direction where God wants it to go. I trust in God to to share this with the people who needed to hear it. So if you like this video, I'm putting out videos every single Sunday because on Sabbath day, you know what I mean? I hope to see you guys then. Bye!